Okay, in this video we're going to compute the expectation for a binomial random variable. Before we get to that computation, though, I want to give an intuitive feel of what it's going to be. And recall that if x is binomially distributed, then it gives the number of times that an event occurs. Now there's two parameters that go along with a binomial random variable, that's n. n is the number of trials, the number of opportunities for the event to occur. And p is the probability of an event in a single trial. Probability. And I've got myself doing the cursive p so well that I went ahead and wrote it that out there in the word. Okay, so n's the number of trials, p is the probability of the event in a single trial. And let's suppose, for example, that n were 10 and p were 0 0.5. So I've got 10 trials, and in each trial, the event happens with probability 1 half, 50%, 0 0.5. Well, what would we expect to see when counting the number of times the event occurs? Well, if the event occurs about 50% of the time, and we have 10 trials, well, then we'd expect to see 10 times 50%, 5. Okay. If we had 30 trials, and the probability of the event were, um, let's say, 0 0.3, then we expect about 30% of the trials to result in the event, so we expect the number of, tr number of events number of occurrences of the event, to be 30 times 0.3, which is 9. In general, this works, and that's going to be our expectation for a binomial random variable. It's the number of trials times the probability of the event in each trial, n times p. Now, the calculation to show that the, that the expectation is indeed np is a little more complicated than what we have here, and I'm going to go through that calculation now. And this is, I think, a really pretty calculation, and that's why we're doing it by hand and not using Wolfram Alpha in this case. It turns out that a lot of these calculations of expectations and standard deviations involve some really beautiful mathematics. Uh, we don't have access to a lot of these. A lot of them, um, you saw me starting to ramble on about, <laughs> about this when we were doing the geometric expectation. But in this example, we do have access to the computation, so I do want to do it here. Okay, so x is going to be a binomially distributed random variable, and I want its expectation. As always, the expectation is the sum of the possibilities times their probabilities. So we have the sum from k equals 0 to n, that's my possible values for a binomially, binomially distribute, distributed random variable, and then the value is k, and then my probability is the probability that x equals k. Okay, so for the binomial distribution, that probability is n choose k times 1 minus p to the n minus k times p to the k. All right, I'm going to turn this combination, this binomial coefficient, into um, a quotient of factorials. So we'll have n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial, and then these factors out here remain the same. And I think in the notes I already did this here. I'll go ahead and do it in the next step. Notice that if I plug in k equals zero, I've got a factor of k here. This entire expression is just zero. Okay, this entire expression is zero. So I can start my sum at k equals 1. And all I've done is lost a term of 0, but when I add 0, that's the additive identity, so it doesn't actually change the value. So I can just start at k equals 1. And I'm going to peel a k off of this factorial. And the reason I'm going to do that is that it'll cancel with the k out front for me. So k factorial is the same as k times k minus 1 factorial. That's because in either case, you're taking k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 times k minus 3, etc. And then we'll leave the n minus k factorial the same. And I'm also going to peel off an n up here. And you may remember from our previous discussion that we want to get 
NP. Uh, let me do a little cursive P here. Okay. Well, this is where that N's going to come from. I peeled it off of that N factorial. Okay, so uh, and then I'll leave my terms out here the same. And actually, I didn't do this in the text, but I'll show you where that P is coming from. I'm going to peel a P off of this P to the power of K. P to the power of K is the same as P times P to the power of K minus 1. Okay, so what happens here? I'll cancel the Ks. N is, gets pulled out because it's constant with respect to the sum. It's not, it doesn't depend on K. And P will get pulled out. So we have NP, the sum from K equals 1 to N of N minus 1 factorial all over k minus 1 factorial times m minus k factorial times 1 minus p to the n minus k and p to the k minus 1. Okay, and now I'm going to make a substitution. And my substitution is going to be m equals k minus 1 m equals k minus 1. So I could change that around a little bit and say that m plus 1 is k. I'm just re-expressing this sum in a different way. And I'm doing this because k minus 1 shows up there, k minus 1 shows up there, and it ends up working out for us very well. So this expectation is np times the sum um, from, let's see, we're going to use the variable m. If k is ranging from 1 to n, m is 1 less than that, so I want to decrease these values by 1. And m is ranging from 0, 1 minus 1, to n minus 1. Because I decrease those k values by 1. And then we have n minus 1 factorial on the top. There's a k minus 1 factorial. Well, notice that's just m factorial. And then we have an n minus k factorial. Now k is m plus 1, so this is just n minus, now, I'm going to write m minus 1 factorial, but now I'm going to erase it and reorder that to make it a little bit clearer what's going on. Notice that it's the same, uh, it doesn't matter which order I subtract it. Okay, and then I have 1 minus p to the n minus, this is the exact same thing that happened down here, n minus k is n minus 1 minus m times p to the m. So I replaced all of my k's with m's. And if I had a k minus 1, that just became an m. If I just had the k, it became a, um, a 1 plus m, in which both of these cases, the, the negative sign had to distribute out to it. Well, I've ran out of room here, so what I'm going to do is erase these lines up here, and then we'll discuss what we have on this last line. Okay, I've got this all erased. Now I'm going to consider a new, new random variable. Uh, y is going to be binomial, not with parameters n and p, but with parameters n minus 1 and p. So the probability of success, uh, probability of the event in each trial is p, and then there are n minus 1 trials. Okay, so in that case, in that case, what do we have here? Well, it turns out that this is n minus 1, choose m. That's exactly what we have in this quotient. n minus 1 factorial over m factorial times n minus 1 minus m factorial. That's, that's how we would write out this binomial coefficient. And then we have the 1 minus p to the number of trials minus m times p to the m. And th that is just the probability that y, not x, uh, should be the random variable y, is equal to m.
and we're summing that over all the possibilities. If I have n minus 1 trials, then the event will occur somewhere between 0 and n minus 1 times. So this is the, t the total probability for the random variable y. Since it's a total probability, it has to be 1. Equals 1. So our expectation is indeed just n times p, because this factor is just 1. And we've shown that for binomial random variables, uh, the expectation is the number of trials n times the probability of the event 